Hey YouTube, Navy98. So I wanted to do a quick unboxing video today of a rifle I recently won uh, at an online auction using Proxybid. And uh, it's one I've been wanting to add to my collection for a while now. I just wanted, haven't wanted to pay the exorbitant cost for it. But every now and then um, you get an awesome deal using a site like Proxybid. And I know uh, I've gotten some comments before about asking if I've used it. And as a matter of fact, yes, most of the rifles in my collection that I've gotten awesome deals on have come through using proxy bid or at least looking at proxy bid, going to find a gun auction site and then going to their website where they might be also hosting an auction uh, as well. Uh, a lot of auctions use proxy bid uh, if they don't have the, the back end to host um, that type of thing uh, on a website of their own. So they use proxy bid to do that for them. Um, others will put their items up on proxy bid, kind of like Rock Island Auction or some of the big ones who also run their own auction separately on their own web page and in person, um, but then charge a little bit more if you use that proxy bid service. Um, I guess take a drink every time I say the word proxy bid, but uh, the bottom line is, uh, in a couple weeks, look for a video for me where I kind of go through the ins and outs of how to use proxy bid or similar type auction sites to get really great deals on military surplus, surplus firearms, as well as other uh, types of militaria and really anything that you can think of that can be auctioned. Um, using them to your advantage and not getting burnt by them because uh, just like if you're using eBay, you, know, you basically don't want to get into a bidding war with somebody and end up spending way too much money um, on a rifle um, and also not accounting for all the different hidden fees. Not really hidden, but they're all in the fine print on proxy bid as to um, additional fees for using the service, um, sales tax, shipping, all those kind of fees that add up. So. When you go to bid on a rifle and you don't think about that, um, and you get some sticker shock when you win the auction and it's an extra $100, $150, or $200 more than you thought you were going to have to pay. So a lot of people are intimidated by it, and I think that's why you can get some great deals on it because there are a lot of people who don't feel comfortable going on there and bidding because they don't know all those fine print details. So I'm going to walk you guys through exactly, we'll, we'll take a look at an auction, we'll do a save. I'll show you how to do a save search on there, how to get alerts uh, for items that you're looking to purchase. And then once you find something that you want to bid on, um, how, how to go on there. I'll have a calculator you can download to actually plug in the, you know, the max value that you're willing to pay after all the fees. And then you can calculate what you need to bid to get to that point. So all that being said, uh, I won this uh, Car 98 AZ uh, from a recent auction using proxy bid. Got a great deal on it. Uh, just some examples of some of the deals I've gotten within at least the past two to three years on these auction sites. Uh, I got a very nice Gewehr 98, uh, pretty much all matching. It is Turkish marked, but you know it was uh, a German rifle. It's got German Imperial proof marks on it. Um, great bore, all that kind of stuff. $400. Uh, another one that I got recently was a Gewehr 8805. Um, again, uh, pristine condition, great bore, all matching, $200. And then a few years back, I got a M95 carbine, um, original 8x50 uh, caliber for $250. Again, all matching. So those are the types of deals you can get on a service like Proxybit if you know what you're doing. Uh, this Car 98 AZ I got for $500. And it's in pretty good shape. It's actually got uh, one of the very early style stocks on it because um, later on in World War I, uh, they put one of the uh, bolt takedown assembly, uh, I don't know what you call them, the, the little disc in the stock here to help you take down the bolt. Um, got some cool markings here on the stock. So this is somewhat all matching. Uh, the bolt itself is all matching within the bolt pieces, but it does not match the rest of the rifle. Um, 
all the other metal, metal components match, but they don't match the stock. So, you know, a little bit of a mismatch here, but for the most part, you know, the things that go together, except for the bolt, uh, do match in the stock. Um, really nice wood on here. Uh, I can tell by looking at this thing and looking down the bore. Uh, it does have a pretty good bore. I can tell by looking at it that it's set in somebody's closet for a long time and was never handled because uh, it's basically full of dust down the bore, like dust bunnies and whatnot. Kind of, you know, what you see happen if somebody just stores it in a closet forever, just barrel up. So a lot of bluing left on this thing and it actually you know obviously it needs to be cleaned up the stock and everything needs to be cleaned up this is a danzig uh, 1918 model it's got all your imperial german proof marks on it and it does have i don't know if this is the original sling but this sling is basically falling apart so if it's not original it was you know one that was put on shortly thereafter it's got your uh, little stacking rod here on the end I'll go ahead and flip it over. Looks pretty decent on this side. Of course, you have some, you know, dings and dents, which is to be expected given this was 1918 and probably used uh, in World War One. These these uh, carbines were basically the, you know, a shortened version of the Gewehr 98 and kind of the predecessor to the K98K that was used in World War Two by the Germans. Uh, as a matter of fact, these Car 98 AZs were actually carried into World War II as well. So this could have seen some time in World War II. Uh, these, in World War I, these are mainly issued to um, your non-frontline troops like artillerymen, uh, cavalry, uh, any kind of support troops like that. Although, uh, if you watched CNR's video on this rifle, which is, I'd highly recommend, uh, they did make their way to the front line as well. So here's that sling. Uh, you see it's kind of missing the little, uh, the sling keeper assembly here. So I'll probably just end up getting one and putting that on there. You've got your markings, car 98. The, uh, the bolt works really well. It's got a really um, nice spring in it. So I don't know if it's somebody replaced it or if it's new. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? Uh, so one little issue here, this uh, little uh, recoil lug is a little bit rusty. So I'll get that cleaned out. I may end up replacing that. It just depends on how bad it looks uh, on the inside, but I'll definitely get that cleaned up and I'll just go ahead and take this all apart, get it all cleaned up, get the bore cleaned up, get the wood cleaned up like I normally do. And we'll take it out to the range uh, and add another eight millimeter Mauser rifle to my collection here. So that's the car 98 AZ. And again, got that on proxy bid, which I'll be doing a video here in the future about how to get some pretty good deals on that site if you know what you're doing. So until next time, this is Navy 98 saying, go Navy.